praying for you. This is something that I've heard actually a couple of times over the last few weeks by people close to me, and I kind of want to go over how this can be perceived as something kind of insulting to atheists for those out there who don't know that already. There's a lot of misconceptions actually about atheists that I kind of want to go over in this video, but mainly that one. But really quick before I get started, I want to tell you about the show called The Librarians, which is about four people from around the world that are selected to work at the Metropolitan Public Library. An ancient order dedicated to solving supernatural mysteries and protecting the unknowing innocent from the secret magical world all around us. Starring Rebecca Raman and Noah Wiley, the film is based on the TNT movie franchise The Librarian and is produced by Dean Devlin, who's known for things like Independence Day and the Patriots. There's lots of fantasy, magic, and monsters, so if you like shows like Buffy, Warehouse 13, Leverage, Grimm, or National Treasure, you're gonna want to tune in. Subscribe to the TNT YouTube channel by clicking right here or the link in my description below for behind the scenes footage, sneak peeks, and other fun exclusives. And don't forget to tune in Sundays at 8, 7 central on TNT. And speaking of supernatural things, let's talk about prayer. So several times over the holiday season so far, I've been told by multiple people that I'm being prayed for. They don't really understand how that could be a little bit insulting. I understand that it's probably coming from a good place, and that's fine. I take that into consideration the first several times that someone says it to me, and then finally I'm like, okay, listen, like, I appreciate the concern, I understand that it's coming from a good place, but I'm really tired of hearing about it. I mean, I, I, I get to a point, I feel like everybody reaches a limit in how much they can put up with. And I reached mine not too long ago, and I said something about it. And the response was, well, you know, whenever Christians think that there's something wrong with somebody or whenever someone needs something or I mean, whenever you're in need of help of some kind. And I was like, whoa, whoa, when there's something wrong with someone, I don't have a disease. This is something that I put a lot of thought into and it's not something that I'm asking for help from you for. If you feel the need personally to say a prayer for me because you're concerned for my eternal soul, then fine. But whenever you come up to me and say it to me, like you feel the need to tell me that I'm being prayed for, like praying for me is not enough. You have to be like, by the way, I'm praying for you because you need it. It's not like that was how it was said. I'm exaggerating, obviously. But still, whenever someone feels the need to tell you that they're praying for you, it's like they want you to know that they think that there's something wrong with you or there's something about you that they don't agree with. It's like their little subtle way of putting a dig at you, I think, and that's just kind of how I feel. I'm not sure how you guys feel, so let me know in the comment section below, by the way, if this is something that you've dealt with and how you've handled it, but it was something that honestly really bothered me, and I didn't really know how to handle it, and of course the conversation can't just end there. It went into something else. It went into, well, if you really think that there's no God, then what's the point of doing good things? I know, I know, it sounds, you know, Typical. It sounds not that surprising. And at the same time, it sounds surprising because you kind of wonder how someone can say something so irritatingly stupid. Like, why would I want to do good in my life if I'm an atheist? Because I don't base my actions off of some kind of reward that I want to get in the afterlife that I don't believe in, by the way. I do good because I like doing good. I like helping people. People do good things all the time just because they feel empathy or compassion for another creature or another human. Like, it's not that hard of a concept to understand. We could explain it partially by evolution. I mean, it's beneficial to live in a society where we're not all killing each other, but that goes overhead sometimes and you just have to say, I don't need religion. I don't need the idea of some cosmic reward to do good things to my neighbor. And then after that question's addressed, the whole question of the afterlife comes into play. Like, well, if you don't believe in God, then, then you think nothing happens when you die. That's so sad and depressing. And I'm like, I mean, you know, just like anybody else, I would love to be reunited with flowers and singing angels, you know, with my family whenever I'm gone, whenever they're gone. You know, you never want to think that that's it. You never want to think that that's goodbye forever. It's really nice and comforting to think that maybe you will see them again. But I can't force myself to believe that because it just seems kind of ridiculous to me. There's no evidence for anything like that and wishful thinking isn't comforting for me because I don't feel better that some imagined fairy tale in my own mind could possibly be true because I see that as just as legitimate as leprechauns or anything else that's supernatural. It just doesn't register with me. I can't force myself to believe it no matter how comforting it may be. And whenever I explained this, the reaction was, well, if you don't think you're ever gonna see your family again, then why don't you spend 
every waking moment with them because there's not going to be any, you know, reuniting moment in heaven where you get to see everyone that you've been missing all of this time. So wouldn't you want to take the time now to just be with them forever or while you're alive? And my response to that was like, you know, I get where you're coming from, but regardless of whether or not you believe that there's going to be this fantasy, you know, reuniting with your family after you die, that doesn't make it true. So we're both going to face the same outcome. If you decide not to spend time with your family now based on the assumption that you're going to see them later on, then you're going to miss out on a lot of things. So the argument can actually be reversed. And I have a feeling this next one is probably particularly difficult for me because of what I do, because of the types of video that I post. But whenever I call out Christianity or whenever I call out extremist Christians, it's very offensive to a lot of people, even though it's not directed at them. A lot of times I have to say, this isn't about all Christians. It's just about the ones that are doing X, Y, Z. You know, they, they still take it personally because viewing criticism of an idea is, is just something they feel like, well, that's my idea. So I take it personally. And I understand because whenever I was religious, I also took stuff like that personally. So I can't be too harsh on that point. But what gets me is whenever I explain what I'm doing, whenever I say I'm criticizing an idea or I'm criticizing a person who holds very radical detrimental ideas, they, they can't look past that. Or whenever I say that I'm making videos because I want to accomplish positive change, I'm doing this from a good place. If you expect me to understand that your prayers are coming from a good place, then you should try to understand that my videos are also coming from a good place, but there's a double standard there and it doesn't apply. And what gets me is a lot of these people will raise an eyebrow at other religions. They'll be like, <laughs> Scientologists believe that? That's ridiculous, right? Oh, Mormons, they think that? That's crazy. I mean, I have a couple of friends who are Mormon, you know, God bless them, but <laughs> some of their ideas are just nonsense, you know? And they say these things to me and I'm just like, that's kind of how I feel about you a little bit. Like, I love you and I don't think that you're a stupid person because there are tons of highly intelligent people who are also religious. I don't think any of those things, but the beliefs that you hold are something that I just can't do. I can't do it. I can't adopt those beliefs myself. And I think they're funny and I think they're ridiculous. And I think that I am accomplishing positive things by pointing that out in my videos. But again, it's double standards. It doesn't work both ways. It's okay to point at Scientologists. It's okay to point at Mormons and be like, <laughs> look at them. They're ridiculous. But talking snakes and talking donkeys and putting a bunch of animals on a tiny little boat for a long period of time, you know, in a burning bush and all of the, you know, zombie stuff, that's totally realistic. But everybody else, that's ridiculous. So my kitty wanted to join me for this last part. She would not leave me alone and I couldn't walk her out of my room anymore. I felt so bad because I have morals and stuff as an atheist. Um, but I just want to say that like, yes, a lot of times in my videos, I am critical of Christianity, but I don't think it's a bad thing to be critical of ideas, especially ones that I think are harmful. So if you can sit there and make fun of different religions that you think are weird, that aren't necessarily that harmful, like Mormons, for example, then you should take a step back and look at what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, especially if you want to walk up to me and tell me that you're praying for me and that you've asked all of your friends to join in on the prayers for me because there's obviously something deeply wrong and then fail to understand how I could take that as a little bit of an insult that everyone needs to be, you know, out there trying to save me because I'm obviously, there's something, something really weird going on, obviously, right? Because I'm not crazy. Okay, anyways, I'm going to end this video now because I feel like I'm just rambling. I just needed to get all of that off my chest because I've been dealing with a lot of it from people who are close to me and it's just hard you know, because they don't understand that I'm coming from a good place and I don't think they realize exactly how open-minded I can be to certain things. I never put up a fuss when people pray, I'll go to church with you. I say Merry Christmas. I love celebrating the holiday season just as much as the next Christian. Um, you know, so whenever it comes to stuff like this, it just kind of gets to me that I can't just be left alone, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Make sure to check out my website, JacquelineGlenn.com. I have a new Carl Sagan t-shirt up there, which is pretty sweet. So you can get a lot of cool stuff like that. I mean, what better way to say Merry Christmas to people than to get them um, an atheist or logic t-shirt from my website? Can't think of one. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Say bye, Tippy. Bye.